my talk's about failure. Can you guys hear me? My talk's about failure, so it's fitting. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be good here. Let me start over, and uh, let's go. In the book, The Phoenix Project, there's a guru character named Derek uh, that introduces the three ways. It's a novel that's both entertaining and at times hard to read since it's about the lives that we all lead. So to review, the first way is flow or system thinking. You'll see many talks at this conference about this concept and how to move things out of your development business and into your customers uh, through operations. The second way is regular feedback into the system. The goal is to incorporate as much intelligent feedback as possible sooner, faster, and cheaper. The third way may be the hardest, but it's also the most important. It's to create a culture of continuous learning. Words like collaboration are a lot easier said than done, though. Sidney Decker believes that you can either have a culture that blames or a culture that learns, but you cannot have both, so you must choose one. So in a retribution culture, uh, we meet hurt with hurt, and we ask these common questions. Which rule was broken? How bad were the consequences? What should the consequences be to the person that broke the rule? Does that sound familiar to anyone? In a restorative culture, we meet hurt with healing, and we ask the questions, who is hurt? What are, those, what are their needs? And whose obligation is it to meet their needs? If you have one takeaway from my talk, it should be to Google Sidney Decker Just Culture and to watch the four short courses online totaling one hour with your team or manager and discuss them. They're about 15 minutes each. You want to work regularly to build a restorative culture, one where you tell your account as opposed to paying or settling accounts, one where you have forward-looking accountability and you look at what is responsible as opposed to who is responsible. And you have to make it safe to fail. Here you see me on a trapeze many years ago when I was 23. That picture on the right, I did not make the connection after a flip and I totally ate it. But I had a safety harness, so it was fine and it was actually a lot of fun. Only two days ago I got my pre-sale copy of the DevOps Handbook. So between this coming out and helping to organize this conference, I haven't slept that much. But in this book there's an example and it's from Netflix. It's always Netflix, right? For the DevOps conference. Um, so from that example, a massive outage was caused by an engineer that had taken Netflix down twice in the last 18 months. What would happen at your job if you took your site down? <laughs> this engineer was not fired. That engineer was moving Netflix forward by miles. Not, not by miles, but by light years. Mistakes will be, will be made, um, but trust is what's needed. So what happens when it's not safe to fail? There's hiding, there's secrecy, there's evasion, there's self-protection, there's finger pointing, and worst of all, there's repetitions of errors that we could learn from. If you've not yet read Blameless Postmortems on Etsy's Code is Craft, this is your next assignment. We need an environment without fear of punishment or retribution, or we are doomed to repeat those failures over and over. It's also an important uh, point um, that I've used in postmortems in the past is that everyone should be empowered to raise their hand, signaling a could have, should have, or would have. These are hindsight bias, and they are not productive in a postmortem meeting. Remember that it's too easy to place the blame on the sharp end, when in fact it's the entire system that produced the failure. Often this may be policy on the blunt end that needs updating, and that has to be an option in a working system. My personal experience with postmortems is that we had a monitoring system that was going down on average multiple times a week. We did postmortems for every issue over four months to finally uncover an issue with the SAN driver configuration that should have been updated uh, months earlier. I can tell you for a fact that postmortems work and help you work to root cause, but a culture of hiding does not work. So for review, um, 
check out Sydney Decker, Just Culture, make it safe to fail, hold blameless postmortems, and I know what you're gonna say to me, but my culture isn't restorative yet. So work to change that. Or find a place where you have a restorative culture. There are many. You guys are too uh, good to uh, live in a bad culture. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.